uh, welcome back, and I hope you enjoyed that little video I put together. Uh, took it from footage, uh, mostly from Rocket Lab, uh, compiled it into a little short video, and uh, put some pretty cool audio on it. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, so for today's video, I just wanted to talk about uh, Rocket Lab's recent launch and subsequent catch attempt. Uh, this is their first attempt to catch the first stage booster after a launch. Previously, they have basically flown these boosters up into the air and dropped them and then re-caught them with a helicopter just to test out um, the concept of catching these boosters with helicopters mid-flight. And those were successful, so now they've moved on to the real deal. This was an actual launch with a uh, customer payload on board. Obviously, the primary mission is always to ensure those satellites get to their proper orbit. But um, the big exciting thing for us is seeing their first ever catch attempt as they attempt to transform their formerly... Uh, expendable electron rocket into a new reusable rocket. Uh, extremely, extremely important to the future of Rocket Lab, their future profitability um, in terms of being able to launch more often, meeting customer demand, lowering their costs, and um, just a very big moment for the future of Rocket Lab as a company. So uh, after the launch, there were some tweets and information from Peter Beck and Rocket Lab that I'd just like to go over here briefly. So uh, after the catch today, Peter Beck, the CEO of Rocket Lab, tweeted out, incredible catch by the recovery team. Can't begin to explain how hard that catch was and the pilots got it. They did release it after hookup as they were not happy with the way it was flying, but no big deal. The rocket splashed down safely and the ship is loading it now. So, um... Yeah, uh, the, the rocket splashed down into the ocean and it was recovered. Now, I don't expect this rocket to be able to be reused uh, after its swim in the ocean, but uh, the team should be able to get uh, lots of important data about how the rocket performed with re-entry and the catch and um, can do their analysis on it and improve it for future launches. So uh, Beck also tweeted... Um, and I thought this was kind of funny. Uh, so the, the name of the mission was there and back again, obviously a reference to J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit, which is quite fun. I always love when my CEOs have a bit of a sense of humor and they're fun guys as well. Um, anyway, uh, a Twitter user suggested it would be cool to call the mission Catch Me If You Can. And uh, Beck said that uh, that would be the name of the next one, which uh, I thought was kind of fun in terms of interacting with the fans. Um, here we have a picture Beck posted of the heat shield saying it did its job nicely, which is good to see that uh, everything survived re-entry intact as we expected. Uh, we do have a picture of the rocket on a recovery ship uh, with Beck just saying homeward bound, safe and sound. Now, of course, once um, they perfect this method of reuse, they don't want to have to be paying for these recovery ships as uh, ship costs are quite expensive. That's part of the reason they wanted to go over the helicopter route and uh, just fly it directly to land from my understanding. We also have a quote from, this one's actually from back in November. By adding reusability to its boosters, Rocket Lab would both be able to launch more often while simultaneously decreasing the material cost of each mission. I think anybody who's not developing a reusable launch vehicle at this point in time is developing a dead-end product because it's just so obvious that this is a fundamental approach that has to be baked in from day one, Rocket Lab CEO Peter Beck said in November. So um, reusability, absolutely essential to being able to compete in the modern rocket industry, and this is a massive step forward for Rocket Lab to be able to accomplish that with their current Electron rocket and they're also planning this in every step of the way for their new Neutron rocket that is under development right now. Bottom line is uh, this is a massive accomplishment for Rocket Lab. Yes, they will not be able to reuse this one specifically, but I mean, we all know these things take time. Uh, space fans will remember the string of failures SpaceX had trying to 
reland their Falcon 9. They lost many boosters, missing the drone ship, crash landing, exploding, landing in the sea, all sorts of things. But now it's just commonplace where the every, every single launch, you expect it to land successfully, and it does. And some people are uh, even more comfortable flying reflown boosters than brand new boosters because they just feel it's safer because it's flight proven. So um, absolutely nothing to be upset about. Definitely a huge step forward. Uh, reuse is a key competitive advantage Rocket Lab will have over some of these new competitors. Uh, it's absolutely essential to the future of Rocket Lab should allow them to increase their launch cadence. Beck has said previously they want to go up to 50 launches a year, whereas now there's something like you know, 10, 12, I believe. And um, obviously that would be massive for their revenues. But at the same time as going up, not only would you be able to have more launches, each launch would be so much cheaper because you have some minor refurbishment and then you just fuel, fuel up the first stage and send it off again. It's absolutely massive for the company. So um, very exciting to see this development. Congratulations to Peter Beck and the whole Rocket Lab team. And we are excited to watch what happens next. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider hitting like and subscribe down below. And uh, let me know what you thought of the launch attempt down in the comments and what you think of Rocket Lab as a company. Would you consider investing in this company? Do you think it's still too early stage, too risky? Uh, let me know what you think. Thanks. Bye.